One word that best describes this reading experience has to be felt. Yes, F-E-L-T, felt, 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 right? Um, yeah. Hey, bookers, I'm Dombi, and I'm here to share my love and experience of reading in hopes that it'll nudge you towards a more wholesome um, personal reading journey. Yes, it's been a while. It's been a Wow, it's been a while since I shared a video, um, but I'm back and let's get into today's book review. This particular book has been on my TBR list for a gazillion years. Um, I discovered this author, discovered this book years ago. Um, it was quite a buzz back then and yeah i wrote a goodreads review on it actually let me just let's just introduce the book quickly it is coconut by kobano madwa and yeah it was quite a buzz um i think it was when i was still in high school um when this dropped so everybody was kind of reading this book really intrigued by it it was her debut novel and yeah, it made um, quite a wave. I didn't get to it then, I already got to it now. So I did mention that I wrote a short review on Goodreads. If you are on Goodreads, find me there, please. Um, I would love to see what you guys are currently reading, what you think about certain books, um, and maybe just see your reading challenges as well, because I recently started doing that. And like I said, I am behind, um, but I am reading, so that's a plus. What I'll do is I'll link my Goodreads uh, profile down below so you can easily just click through and friend me, follow me, whatever, check out what I've read. Um, I must mention though that I was very sure that I wouldn't do a video review of this book. Uh, I kind of read it and did a quick review and in my head i was like okay next one but after a while i was like actually let me just share it here with everybody on my book too because i haven't been here in a while i know i'm sorry <laughs> life has been lifing um but all is good and i'm back so what I try to do with most of my reviews is not share too many spoilers um, and this review will follow the same direction. Um, but I, what I will do is I actually want to read you the blurb um, at the book of the at the back of the book. This is the front cover. Love it, love it, love it. And I'm kind of like matching, right? I wish I had the same hairstyle. I'm sorry, like yeah, your girl and short hair lately. I just, I'm loving my short hair, I'm loving my color, so, yeah, but anyways, the nails work as well, right? Anyways, um, I, I digress. So, the blurb says, um, would I have turned out to be nothing if mama had not married daddy? Would I not be the same Ophelia I am now if mama had never made it out of the dreaded location? What if mama had chosen love? Where would I be now? What would I be now? Nothing. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna read this paragraph as well because it kind of um, introduces you to the actual novel quite well. It says, Coconut is an extraordinary debut novel about growing up black in white suburbia where the cost of fitting in can be your very identity. It is against this backdrop of, it is against this backdrop of potential loss that two extraordinary young women struggle to find themselves. Okay, there is more, but I'm not gonna cover all the rest. Get this copy, um, lovely book. Like I said, I picked up this book because I really needed something short, sweet, easy to read, um, a light read, if you might. So at the beginning of the book, um, and even halfway through, I wasn't quite sure where the narrative was going. Um, at some points, it did feel a bit disjointed, but I just carried on reading. Ufilwe and Figile, better known as Figs, 
really give us the sense of what it means, what it looks like, what it feels like to grow up as a young black woman in modern day Johannesburg. There are these young black girls immersed in um, white culture, uh, predominantly experiences that um, have them and find them engaging with white people um, and how that kind of molds how they think about themselves, how they think about their home environments, um, and how they think life would be different had things happened differently, right? So they deal with um, a lot of classist environments. There are a lot of racial innuendos throughout the story. The story is really highlighted um, oppressive behaviors uh, that really highlighted their blackness and put that center stage. Um, even though in some way they were both really evading their identities, right? I think, you know, you really pick that up, um, especially in Figila's story and how her work environment could get quite toxic. Um, for me, I was just like, yeah, it's, no, you know, um, there's certain uh, times when I felt I could not deal with that kind of treatment. And I really did feel that um, no matter how hard they tried to be more or less of themselves, they were always confronted by these new forms of oppression, these new forms of, um, you know, of racism, of just being in these racially charged moments oh god uh, <laughs> yeah and I, I really for me it was just like yeah like you really cannot it's difficult to try and win and overcome this um especially in the moment as and when it happens as and when somebody says that comment as and when somebody really treats you in a specific way uh, and i really felt like the characters always were dealing with um those instances where they needed to just ground and find themselves in between all of that chaos and all of that drama. And for me, that also really showed the the push and pull um, for the characters themselves, for Ufilwe, for Ufigile, um, in that they were really always trying to align themselves somehow to the universe, align their, their dreams, their ambitions, who they wanted to be. Um, with their actual reality but somehow that always missed like it was just it just felt like can the universe listen to this person and just align them and make things happen for them um, but I really felt like it was just a bit of a struggle um, a bit of a challenge to to get that right um, I mean there's plenty to chat about um, in this book but I think if you are attracted to themes of um, classism, racism, um, privilege, um, and basically just a lived black experience from a young woman's point of view. This book kind of caters to that, so you will definitely enjoy reading it. It is a short and sweet uh, read, very easy read. I really enjoyed uh, Kobano's writing here. Uh, because I was looking for a bit of an easier read, um, like I'd said earlier on. I found it um, quite impeccable in how she wrote it. Sorry, I am cut my, my knuckles, but <laughs> I really did enjoy it. I wouldn't hesitate picking up any, her, any of her other books, um, Spilt Milk, uh, Period Pain as well. So yeah, if that sounds like it fits your bill, grab the book. So I mean, at the very end of the story, I I think the one thing I took away from it is that for me, it's clear that everyone's story matters. Everyone's story matters. Everyone's story is worth being told. Everyone's story is worth being listened to, right? So every voice has its place. And having said that, I think Ufilwe and Figile's voices were um, obviously stand out. Um, but I think they impacted how they view family, how they view love, how they view their own futures because of the environments that they're in, right? Um, yeah, 
I, th I think you also, and maybe this is how I felt at the beginning of the book where I wasn't quite sure where it was headed. And in my head, I was like, okay, where are we going with this? But maybe that's what Kopano wanted to achieve is that the characters' lives needed to feel quite mundane. Um, and maybe, and this is just me, you know, it's a bit of a brain fart thinking out loud. Um, I obviously don't know I what was going on in Gopanam's head, but <laughs> for me, it really felt like maybe that, maybe that mundane approach to the characters' lives um, is what's actually grabbed a lot of people's attention uh, and makes the story quite relatable, makes the story quite um, unique. So yeah, now just in hindsight, now that I think about it, I think maybe the, the, that slow start just sets you in the pace of what Ophelia is about, what uh, Fix is about, and so that you just understand better their feelings as their story progresses, their ambitions, um, and how their identities start to be molded by these experiences that they have, right? So I'm waffling. Um, but yeah, I think in a nutshell, that's really what I got from Coconut. It's not a very long and lengthy review, I know. Um, and I tried to not have any spoilers at all. Very difficult to do. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that, right? It's a very short and sweet review for a very short and sweet book. So I think if you enjoyed this review and you're looking for more books just like this one um, that you can kind of get lost in, that you can discover, that you can try out, <laughs> um, hit the link in my cards, check out my other videos, catch yourself up on some of the books that I've read, um, and definitely follow me on social media. I'm quite active on Instagram, not so much on Facebook, um, picking it up on Twitter, uh, and I'm back on YouTube. So subscribe to my channel here, and I look forward to uh, connecting with you on everything bookish. Um, yeah, let's see where the story takes us, guys. Cheers.